Hello, this is Dr. Frank Chase Jr. again concerning tithing. And in my previous uh, dialogue with you, I wanted to uh, give you additional information about the tithe. Now, I will say this when those of you who decide to sit down and get your Bibles out and study tithing, I will tell you it is the most fascinating uh, the most fascinating study you could ever do in the Torah, in the Old Testament. As I said earlier, the Jews don't call it the Old Testament or the Israelites don't call it the Old Testament. They call it the Torah. But it's a fascinating study. And to really understand it, you really have to study the complete Old Testament on this matter. And first, we're going to go back to Leviticus 27, 30 through 33, to kind of give you some more clarification on the tithe. Now, remember, Leviticus 27, 30 through 33, the Israelites had not made it to the promised land as of yet. So what we are reading is instructions that God gave them prior to getting there. So tithing did not start until they got to the promised land and they were settled in. So all the time they were roaming around in the wilderness, there was no tithing at all. There was no tithing at all. Every Israelite gave unto God as they saw fit. The system had not been set up yet. God is recently in Leviticus trying to set it up before they get to the promised land. But I know I've already discussed what they got and what they were supposed to get and how they got it in the previous uh, study with you in part four. Leviticus 27, 30 through 33 says, And all the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord. It is holy unto the Lord, and if a man will redeem all of his tithes. Now, there we go again. In Israel, if you were a herder, farmer, crop grower, you could redeem your tithe. That means the Israelite could keep his tithe. That's right. The Israelite could keep his tithe. However, the instruction given in Leviticus was that the there was an assessment on that when you did that. He shall add a fifth part thereof. So you could keep your tithe, but you would pay the amount of what that is in whatever form that the, the priest set amount set plus an assessment of 20%. So there was an ex even exchange, as I said earlier. You got to keep your tithe, but you gave um, money instead. But that money was not the tithe. It was the redemption money. That's what that was called, redemption money. It was not a tithe. The money that was given was not a tithe. It was redemption money. Because the scripture says here, you redeem. That means you buy back. Now, Let's continue here. And concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock, even whatsoever passes under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. Now, the tenth meaning what? The tenth one. Let's say you had a cow, uh, a flock of cows or a herd of cows, and the cow would go under the rod of the herder and they would have to count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The tenth one was the holy unto the Lord. The tenth one was the tithe. The tenth one was holy unto the Lord. Now, when he counted that tenth, the scripture says here that even if it is bad, you cannot switch it out. God still wanted that tenth one. So that dispels the myth that your tithe had to be perfect according to the way it's taught in reference to money. So in Israel, God said, wait a minute, the tenth one is holy. If the farmer or herder or cattle grower, cattle, wanted to give a good one, then he had to give the bad one and the good one, and they both be holy unto the Lord, as we shall see right here. And concerning the tithe of the herd or the flock, even whatsoever passes under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, as we can see, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. So 
the cattle and the herds could not be redeemed. Only the crops could be redeemed. These are the instructions or commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel at Mount Sinai. And so far, we see exactly what happens here about the tithe. Now, I want to make some more points about this concerning the agricultural tithe in Israel. The agricultural tithe in Israel only included agricultural products, seed of the land, fruit of the tree, and animals, herds and flocks. Money was not a tithable item. I know what they gave as far as redemption money, but that was just redemption to buy back the tithe. So the farmer could keep his, his crop and exchange it for what the assessment would be plus 20%. So that dispels the myth that Israelites did not have any money. They did. The 10th one was to pass under the rod. That's what I already said. The 10th one passed under the rod, and that was the holy unto the Lord. That was the tithe. Not the first, as you constantly hear, your first 10th. It was the 10th animal passing under the rod that was holy unto the Lord. Now, the tithe was not owed in Israel if a cattle rancher or herder only had nine. Let's say his increase for the year, and that's right, tithing was not done weekly in Israel. It was done based on harvesting, planting cycles, and herding cycles, and the birth of herds. If a farmer that year birthed, had some cows, and he only birthed nine, he could not tithe because there was no tenth one to pass under the rod. So if he had nine, that farmer or herder, that herder or cattle herder could not tithe that year. So everyone did not tithe in Israel, only on the increase, never on the base, only on the increase. So if he had 11, the tenth one would be holy. 11 cows, the tenth one would be, or bulls, or goats, or sheep. The tenth one would be holy unto the Lord. Now, so if a man in Israel did clams or was not tithable, grew walnuts, it was not tithable. Uh, it was so, and if he did the stuffed bean bags or did sandblasting, none of those prophets were tithable because we know the tithe was food items from Israel. Food items from Israel. Some more facts about tithing is this, and we and, and I know this is repetitive, but you must understand this subject is matter is very complicated in Israel, uh, the tithing system, and you cannot separate it out. The tithe was only given to the Levites. It was one-tenth of the grains, fruits, and nuts, Numbers 18, 25 through 32. The tithe was the tithe, this tithe was the tithe the Levites received from the eleven tribes. The other eleven tribes of Israel that did herding and farming uh, and grew crops, they tithed to the Israelites. Numbers 18.24. The Levites had to tithe, had to tithe, excuse me, the Levites had to tithe a tithe, a tenth of the tithe to the high priest, which was 1%, as I said earlier. Verses 25 through 31 in Numbers chapter 18. The Levites uh, tithe. The Levites tithe to the high priest, 1%. The tenth of the tithe, the tenth of the tithe, the priest got from the Levites supported and guaranteed security for the priest and protected the temple system. So yes, there was an order in things going on in the Old Testament. Now, priests were exempt from the tithe. Once the high priest, Aaron, got the tithe from the Levites, who did Aaron tithe to? No one. Now, I want to make a statement here. Because we are all priests unto God, because the new covenant believers are now a holy and a royal priesthood, we do not tithe because the system simply does not exist anymore. 
because now we are all priests under God and the Levites do not need to be go-betweens for us anymore because when the temple, when the veil of the temple was rent, that meant we all have access to God. And now the Levites are no longer necessary in the new covenant and that system that was set up by the Levites, the Levitical priesthood, no longer exists. And here's what the Bible says, as I said earlier about that. The Levite priest received a command in the Old Testament to take tithes from the other 11 tribes in Israel. As Hebrews truly tries to explain to the Hebrew people in the book of Hebrews. In 7 and 5 and verses 11. And verily they that are of the sons of Levi who received the office of the priesthood, have the commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. And so we see that the Levites uh, have the commandment, and that commandment was not transferred to anyone else. It is explicit. No one else got that commandment. So now I want to give, give you some additional information on uh, what else happened in Israel with the Levitical tithe. A farmer could choose not to tithe, but to buy back the tithe and give money instead, but add 20%. There, and that is redemption money. It's not a tithe money. It is redemption money. He bought his tithe back. The tithe was edible items, but he paid redemption money to keep it. So there was an even exchange. There was an exchange, and the tither benefited by, a, by the exchange. Are tithers today receiving wheat and corn in return for their money if they decide to redeem or buy back the tithe? There is no such thing as buying back your tithe in the new covenant. Do you see how the system is all screwed up? Let's say you want to tithe, and we say that tithe is not money, but people are saying it is, and you want to keep your tithe. Well, according to the Old Testament law, you were supposed to get something back. You get to keep something, but then there was an assessed value on what you got to give back. So you can't give money for money. You give money and you get some money back for keeping your tithe. Now, it doesn't make sense, does it? The problem is that Christians hand over tithe money, but they don't get a tangible exchange. You give your 10% cash, but there is no tangible exchange back to you if you wanted to redeem your tithe. Now, trying to fit modern-day tithing system into the specific laws of tithing in the Old Testament, you can see it simply just starts falling apart. When a farmer gave the priest money, the person received something in return, as you can see. When Christians do a money tithe transaction, are they receiving something tangible in return? The answer is no. They are getting nothing but empty wallets. At least in the law, you got something in return which, the, which was the tithe itself. There was an ex, even exchange. You could only exchange crops for money. As I said earlier, the cattle was not exchangeable. The cattle was holy unto the Lord, and you could not exchange it. And even if it was something wrong with the cattle, the tenth one going under the rod, the farmer felt like he wanted to give God the best. He could do so by giving the eleventh one, but both it, the tenth, both the 10th one and the 11th one became holy unto the Lord, and God was fine with that. The tithe in Leviticus, God simply did not specify what to give it, who to give it to, as we said earlier, but we read to you in Numbers chapter 18 who he gave it to. Now, I want to go in and give you some additional information on how this tithe thing actually worked out by letting you know that the Israelites did not specifically get the tithe alone. They got an inheritance package, as I said earlier in my previous study with you in study number four. I told you that they got the tithe as an inheritance. Now I'm going to read to you from the scripture what other parts of the inheritance that they got. Hold on just a second. The Israelites got an inheritance package. Because they did not get any land in Canaan, they got an inheritance package that there was a replacement, a replacement for land. 
Now, it is assumed that the Israelites did not get anything other than the tithe, but that is simply not the case. God gave Israelites the tithe, one, they got 3,000 feet of pasture land, two, and they got 48 Levitical cities to live in. That's three. So they got a tripart inheritance package that you cannot separate. They all went together. You cannot pull out the tithe in the new covenant and say it is required and then realize that, wait a minute, the Levites got two things according to the Torah, according to the instructions, according to the commandments in the law. They got three things, the tithe, 3,000 feet of pasture land and Levitical cities. All of that came together and you cannot pull one out and say the new covenant church is supposed to tithe, but then on the back end say that's all. Well, no, according to the law, that would require, uh, if you're following the law according to tithing, that will require you to receive 48 cities as a new covenant pastor and 3,000 feet of pasture land from your congregation. Now, it simply does not fit. Here is how the tithe actually went in Israel in Numbers 35, 1 through 8. Numbers 35, 1 through 8 will explain exactly how this took place. Exactly how this took place. You will see this. Now, you have to read the entire Old Testament concerning the Levites and, the, and all the tithing uh, requirements before you can truly get an understanding, I'm trying to give you simply overview uh, lessons on this. Numbers 35, 1 through 8 says this, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites the, of the inheritance of their possessions, cities to dwell in. 48 cities, as I said, cities to dwell in, and you shall also give unto the Levites suburbs for the cities around them. You mean to tell me the Levites lived in their cities and suburbs? They were not in the temple 24-7. They were not full time. Now, verse 3. And the cities they shall have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle and their goods and for their beasts. Now, where did they get their cattle's goods and beasts? It was the tithe, the cattle tithe, um, their goods, the crops that they had received from the tithe and their beasts. So they had all this stuff in the cities. Wow. And the suburbs of the cities, which you shall give unto the Levites, shall reach from the wall of the city and outward a thousand cubits round about 3,000 feet of pasture land. And you shall measure from without the city on the east side 2,000 cubits, on the south side 2,000 cubits, and on the west side 2,000 cubits, and on the north side 2,000 cubits, and on the city shall be in the midst, this shall be to them the suburbs of the cities. Verse 6, and among the cities which you shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, and you shall appoint for the manslayer that they may flee thither, and to them you shall add 48 and two cities. 48 cities. As we said earlier, that's what they got. So the cities which you shall give the Levites shall be 48 cities, them shall you give with their suburbs. And the cities which you shall give them shall be the possession of the children of Israel from, that, from them that have many, you shall give many, but from them that have few, you shall give few. Everyone shall give of his cities unto the Levites according to his inheritance, which he inherited. So when they get to the promised land of Canaan, he set out the instructions on what they supposed to do on how to divvy up what they were supposed to give to the Levites. So as we can see, the Levites got 48 cities, the Levites got 48 cities, 3,000 feet of pasture lands, and the tithes, and the offerings. And guess what? 
Not nowhere did we read that they ever got money as a tithe. So I don't understand why it's not clear to people what the Israelites got in these uh in the in the scripture. Now we're gonna go over to uh another part of this, but I won't discuss it now. But I wanna I wanna mention one more thing about this tithe in Israel. I want to mention one more thing about this tithe in Israel. Pastors and ministers, I understand the need for money to take care of the mortgages of your church, but the Bible is clear. The Bible is strictly clear on what the tithe is. It is always food from inside Israel. Farmers and herders, herders who grew crops, flocks. This was the tithe for Israel. And I, I don't understand why this is hard for people to understand, but this is what it was taking place. It has never been transferred to the new covenant priesthood under Christ. The rights and the privileges of the Levitical tithe, even though the Levitical system ended, the rights and the privileges of the Levitical tithe and all of these other things were not transferred to the new covenant system. We have no right to make a claim on a Levitical tithe, 3,000 feet of pasture land and 48 cities because we were not given that inheritance. Our inheritance is from Christ. We were not given no one's inheritance. Legally, in a court of law, no one could lay claim to anyone else's inheritance. The tribe of Levi was given the right to collect the tithe, to receive 3,000 feet of pasture land, and that inheritance package was not transferred to no new covenant pastor or new covenant church at all. We do not simply have a right to it. Now, we have rights to other things, but we do not have rights to that tithe. It belongs to the Levites. And if you are not a Levite, if you cannot produce papers according to Nehemiah that you are from the tribe of Levi, you have no right to claim the Levi's inheritance. It was not, it did not descend down to us. It never has. And so that is why it is difficult to understand why the system of tithing and the way it is taught in its many varied uh, teachings in the in today's world is completely uncalled for. So we must adhere to new covenant giving principles and we will be blessed greatly. But until we understand what the purpose of the tithe is and how it was not transferred, then we must focus on what the new covenant giving principles are. I will stop here and I will come back and give you some more additional information. But you can always read these entire studies that I'm doing online at www.holytithe.com slash tithingpresent.pdf. When you type tithing present, put a capital T on tithing and a capital P on present so that it will come up for you. Again, thank you for listening. And I will be back with some additional information on this subject. And hold your horses. It gets even more exciting than this. Now we're going to talk about next probably a little bit of something concerning did Israel have money? Were they totally agricultural? And or did they have any money or was money used in Israel? And I'm going to show you next that they did use money in Israel. And every verse where it is mentioned God never called for money to be tithed. Thank you.